What's the one good nuclear warfare brought to our civilization? Peter Kreeft argues in his book Back to Virtue that that one good is that nuclear warfare made known to us the need for an education in traditional values. Kreeft is a devout Roman Catholic professor and he argues that the West needs to adopt the moral framework it once had when it was committed to the religion of Christianity in order to deal with the moral questions that we must deal with today. Kreeft gives this as a 15 point framework. The first three points being the three theological virtues of faith, hope and love. The next four being the cardinal virtues of justice, wisdom, um, moderation and courage. And the final eight being the beatitudes, which are the opposites to the seven deadly sins. Chris starts off the book by talking about how when you're at the edge of the abyss and the Western civilization is at the edge of nuclear warfare, when you're at the edge of an abyss, the most progressive direction is backwards. So we should go back and adopt the moral framework that we once had. He quotes Confucius towards the beginning, saying that if there is harmony in the heart, there's harmony in the family. If there's harmony in the family, there's harmony in the nation. If there's harmony in the nation, there's harmony in the world. There's harmony in the world. Kreeft argues that we need to love one another or we will die, as W.H. Auden said. Kreeft argues that the darkness surrounding society today is made of a metaphysical thread. Meaning that when philosophers attack the belief in God, when philosophers attack um, objective truth, when as a society we abandon truth, goodness and beauty, that's when other more shallow philosophies replace them that have led to the moral degradation that we have today. For example, as Francis Bacon puts it, the entire Western civilization today is focused on nothing but man's conquest of nature. As opposed to focusing on God, as opposed to focusing on rectifying our own selves, we've only focused on how best can we conquer nature. And that's what's led to nuclear warfare. That's what's led to the climate change that we see today and the destruction of the entire earth. Kreeft points out that Aristotle, Aristotle believed that there were three reasons for the pursuit of knowledge. And the first and most important being pursuit of truth, objective truth. The second reason was in order to act morally in the world. And the third least important reason was for power, technique, being able to do things, technology, so on and so forth. But as you can see, with man's conquest of nature, things have flipped on their head. We no longer believe in objective truth. We no longer believe in moral action. All we're concerned with now is power, technology, the ability to do things. And we see this on a micro level in our own lives. All of our parents want us to go and study engineering. All of our parents want us to go and study medicine. Why? Because that's what we value as a society. That's what we value as a society, as opposed to the humanities, as opposed to better understanding our own selves, as opposed to even religious studies, for example. We're entirely concerned on technology and how can we conquer the world best we can. He, uh, Kreeft quotes Freud from one of his books titled Civilization and, Dis and Its Discontents, that we as a civilization, we've achieved so much power, but we're not happy with the power that we have. We're just not happy with the power that we have. Morality has become both privatized and collectivized, meaning that individually, there is no right and wrong. You can do whatever you want as long as you're not hurting somebody else. But collectively as a society, what's right depends on majority vote. Every five years, our morals change, our virtues change, the things that we believe is true change. And as a society, we want to all sign off on it. And if you don't, you are a morally evil person. Morals have become both privatized and collectivized. And the effect is seen, the effect of this, of these underlying ideas of ours can be seen in our own classrooms. This is close to my heart as I'm training to be a high school teacher. And in our studies, they tell us that you're not a teacher, you're a facilitator. There is no objective truth. You as a teacher, you might believe something. If you try to force your beliefs on the student, that is oppressive. Therefore, your job as a teacher is to facilitate the students to help them discover their own truths. Kreef writes that the only good we have remaining as a society is to be kind to each other. And why is that? Because the only thing we value as a society anymore is comfort and pleasure. And why is that? Because as a society, we have become materialists. We don't believe in anything beyond the material. We don't believe in anything beyond the material. And this idea can be sourced in the Enlightenment. In the book, Kreeft quotes another man named Alexander Pope, it, mocking the beliefs of the Enlightenment. Because the Enlightenment is when um, a mechanistic view of the world came about, a materialistic view, the view that there's nothing but the laws of nature, there's nothing beyond, nothing transcendent. 
So he gives these two lines. In the Bible, it says that God says, let there be light. So Alexander Pope, in mocking the beliefs of the Enlightenment, he says this. Nature and nature's laws lay hidden night. God said, let Newton be, and all was light. Finally, Kreeft ends his introduction to the topic of the virtues with a, with a perusing through the history of the Western civilization, seeing how we arrived at this point before delving into the three theological virtues, faith, hope, and love. Now, this part of the book, the discussion on the virtues, the discussion on the beatitudes, the discussion on the theological virtues and the cardinal virtues, there's lots of benefit in it. But Kreeft is a devout Roman Catholic. So the approach that he takes is highly, highly uh, built upon the Christian theology. So the majority of the benefit in this section of the book is for believing Christians. If you do not accept the, the perception Christians have of Jesus Christ, then you're not going to have as much benefit in this discussion Kreeft has on the virtues. But there is still benefit there, and I would still recommend one and all to go through that. As a lot of these virtues and vices are universal regardless of tradition. Kreeft ends his book by talking, by quoting Albert Camus. Camus was a French atheist that was actually very consistent in his beliefs. So Kreeft generally respects him. Camus writes that I sometimes think of what huge historians will say of us. A single sentence will suffice for modern man. He fornicated and read the papers. That is the situation that we're in now. That's our state morally that we're in now. We've become people that are animalistic with no higher virtues, as Kreeft says. But Kreeft ends the book on a very optimistic note. He says that when the best of society become passionate and intense in their beliefs on virtues and morals and goodness, and they practice that within themselves and within their communities, within their families, then we as a society will be able to divert the trajectory we're on. We'll be able to divert nuclear Armageddon. We'll be able to love one another.